Hey booktube, it's Jackie, how's it going? If you are new to me and it's the first time you're seeing my face, hello, what's up? My name's Jackie, I sit on my floor and I talk about books. So I hope that's why you're here because that's what's gonna be happening today. If you are not new to me, thank you for always tuning in the continued support, I really do appreciate it. So today for you, as you can see from the title of the video is my yearly wrap up. This is all of those stats that I've kept throughout the year and you get to see the big end numbers and end goals as well as I have a special announcement at the end of the video. So if you are not keen on statistics and numbers and things of that nature, please feel free to skip right down to the announcement. It's hyperlinked right here for you and it'll be hyperlinked to the bottom box below. So you can feel free to skip forward. But if you'd like to, please stay with me and see how I did in 2022. So without further ado, grab yourself a drink, have yourself a seat and let's get talking some stats. Okay dive right in. Total books read. Total books read and completed for the year of 2022. 129. 129 books. I started two and I didn't finish them. So 129 is what I actually completed this year. Of those 129 books, 89 were physical slash ebooks and 40 were audio. My total pages read, however, does include the amount of pages I read on those two books I started but did not complete by the end of 2022 um, because I read a majority of the book in 2022, um, but it was not technically completed. And my total pages read was 25,816 pages. Holy shit. That's awesome. Um, my total listening time, and just so you guys know, this is actually the very first year I ever started using audiobooks. So this number is extremely impressive to me, and I'm kind of anxious to see how next year goes compared to this because this is my very first tally of listening time. And that was a grand total of 462 hours and 59 minutes. You do the math of how many days that was of me just listening to books. I, I don't, I don't want to actually know. <laughs> don't tell me. <laughs> I don't want to know. Um, and my average rating for all 129 books that were completed in 2022 was a 3.7. So not too shabby. I'm very, very proud of myself. I'm going to give myself a little round of applause. Feel free to join me if you like. Um, now for my genre breakdowns, my genre breakdowns, um, if the book fell into multiple genres, it got labeled twice as for each genre. So if you add these numbers up, they're probably not going to add up correctly, just a heads up. Uh, so I have with the lowest amount in um, categories is humor with two. Then I go to classics with three. And then I have sci-fi with four. I have nonfiction with seven. I have young adult, 11. I had paranormal, 12. Historicals, 14. Then I have fantasy at 27. Other at 35. And other is a, com is a combination of erotica, philosophical fiction, poetry, and some other rando genres that my stat sheet didn't have. So it just got marked as other. And the winner of the most I read in a genre this year, drum roll please. That's a really crappy drum roll. I'm not a drummer. It's okay. I sing. Um, is Romance with 86. So Romance took the cake on the most books read in that genre. And I'm okay with that. I'm a-okay. I had a great time with all of these. So I'm ecstatic about it. My star ratings. So my star ratings are as follows. I had one, one star, six, two stars, 47, three stars, 41, four stars, and 28, five stars in the year of 2022. Not too shabby. I can see why my average is a 3.7 with 47 three stars. Um, a lot of mid-range books. And you know, three three is not bad. Three is not bad. It means 
I enjoyed it and I want to continue with it. But it does have its problems. So stuff that could be worked on, stuff that could grow, I, I could uh, hopefully the author works on and continues to progress. So I'm I'm not upset with having more three stars. I would have liked to have some more five stars, but the five stars I know I had, I'm not complaining about them at the fuck all. They were fantastic. All right. So for my goals for the year 2022, one of my goals was obviously my Goodreads reading challenge of 60 books. And I knocked that thing out of the water with 129 books. So I'm going to go with completed on that one. Completed. Yes. Uh, my next goal was my Mount Everest goal. This was to read my physical TBR down that I owned prior to the beginning of 2022. And I chose the Mount Blanc level, which was 24 books. And I completed that reading 28. So, completed. It's two for two. It's two for two. Then we get to my classics challenge, where I was to read a classic book once a month. Um... I read three. <laughs> so I'm going to count that as a fail. Fail. We also had my buzzword challenge. The buzzword challenge was um, hosted by um, Books and Lala. I'll link her channel down below. She created a list of buzzwords and you were to create your TBR for each month around that buzzword or pick one book. I chose the one book and throughout the year I completed six months challenges. So not a total fail. It's a half, but technically it was not completed. So, I mean, sometimes I just wasn't feeling those books. Okay, guys, I just wasn't. I did have a must read by the end of 2022 list and I will link that video down below. There were 10 books on that list, and I read a grand total of four. Four of them. Uh, the four that I read were Wicked Saints by Emily Duncan. I gave this three stars. I read Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. I gave this five stars. I read Malice by John Gwen, and I gave this, I believe, four stars. And I read Empire the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. And I gave this, undoubtedly, without question, five fucking stars. This thing was fucking fantastic. I still talk about this book all the time. So, I did not complete that list. But the books that I did read, I did enjoy off of it. And I will be uploading a books that I would like to read by the end of 2023 list as well. So, we'll see how will I do with it next year? The next challenge I also participated in was the ABC, ABC challenge, where you read a book for every letter of the alphabet. And I'm happy to say this was 100% completed by the end of the year. I read a book starting with every single letter of the alphabet through the entire year. The very last book was Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Mass. And I started it on Christmas fucking day, so it counts. <laughs> It counts, people. It counts. Now, I am not going to go through all 26 books, but if you would like, please let me know in the down box below if you would like to see a video dedicated to the ABC challenge and what books I read for it. But it did get completed. It was completed. I was very, very proud of myself because this one I was kind of worried about for a little bit. I was kind of worried. I didn't know if I was going to do it, especially towards the end with the XYZs. I, I had no idea. But uh, I did it, guys. I am, that is a win for me. That's a complete, check that baby, that puppy off. Thank you very much. So again, let me know down the down box below or in the comment section if you'd like to uh, see a video on the ABC challenge and what books I read for it. And the last challenge that I took place in was my TBR jar. This little guy right here, you remember him? My little cup of, po my little poison apple cup of doom. I had a baker's dozen challenges in here, and of the 12, I completed nine. So of the 12 months, I completed nine, but I did have 13 options in here, so I knew there was going to be one extra, uh, just so I didn't, 
I, there was still some kind of mystery even at the end of the year. Now, those books I will be going over. So, the book I read for January, which this prompt was to read a book set at sea or on a ship, was Patrick O'Brien's Master and Commander. Looks like this. I did have a physical copy of this, but I unhauled this because this was my only one star book of the year. This book is phenomenal for somebody who is very into Nautilus type seafaring, um, very militaristic style books. Um, this just was not my cup of tea. I did, I was not, I was not having a good time. I enjoyed the movie so much fucking more. Um, but this book for me was a one star because it just did not hold my interest. But for some people, this book is five stars. So if you are into seafaring, if you are into um, seafaring history, if you are into um, heavy dialects, if you're into the, all those kind of things, please go pick this up. It is a very long standing beloved series. It just wasn't for me. For February, I was to reread a favorite book, and I chose Lori Hall's Anderson Speak, and I gave this thing five stars. I read this originally when I was a freshman in high school, and it still held its weight to me. I still had a great fucking time with this. I still enjoyed it as much as I did the very first time I read it. So I was very, very happy with this one for sure. March's challenge was to begin a series you have wanted to start, and that was the Wicked Something Dark and Something Holy by Emily Duncan, and that's when I read Wicked Saints. I only gave this three stars. I was not the biggest fan of it. It kind of let me down, although the gore in this was top-notch, and I do plan on completing the rest of the series. I do own the rest of the series already. I did end up purchasing it, um, but it's just I don't know when I'm going to pick it up because it just didn't really hold its weight. It, it promised a lot, and it just didn't quite deliver for me, but it wasn't horrible, and I'm telling you, the blood and guts and gore in this was <sighs> lots of blood. Lots of blood. But there was that twist ending that I did not see coming, which bumped it to three stars. So, April's challenge was to read a book with a double digit in the title, and I did not complete that one. May's challenge was to read an author with the same initials. Technically, I did not complete this one in May. However, however, I did read a book this year whose initials, author's initials match mine, and that is Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. Jackie Kennedy, Jay Kristoff. So, did I complete it when I was supposed to? No. But did I complete a challenge of reading an author, reading a book with an author's same initials as me? Yes, yes I did. So, I'm going to count it for myself, just so you know. <laughs> but technically, it was not completed in May. <laughs> June's challenge was to continue a previously started series, and that is when I picked up Valor by John Gwen, and it looks like this. I did not complete it in June, and I actually re-picked it back up later on in the year, and I'm still actively working through it. So I'm going to consider this a win. Thank you. It's a win because it will get finished. And I don't have the physical copy with me because it's on the other side of the room. Um, so here's a nice little image of it. There you go. The challenge I had set for July was to read a book set in a location you would like to visit. And I chose Diana Gabaldon's Dragonfly and Amber. This is set in Scotland and in France, both countries I would love to go to at some point in time. And this is the second installment to the Outlander series. And I gave this thing five stars. This thing is fucking phenomenal. This whole series is phenomenal. I talk about this series all the fucking time. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the series. This one, however, definitely is more political machinations building up for the Bonnie Prince Charles and the, um, and the big Coladen um, battle. So this one is not so much heavy on the romance as the first one is, but still fucking phenomenal. Still amazing. Loved it. August's challenge was to read a 2021 Goodreads winner, and I chose Lore Olympus Volume 1. It won for best um, graphic novel, and I gave this three stars. 
September's was to read a book that was turned into a film, and I chose Jim Henson's Dark Crystal novelization. I gave this three stars. Um, this is literally the screenplay of a Dark Crystal put into novel format. So it's not the book that was actually turned into the film, but I made it work because I was rewatching The Dark Crystal the time when I picked this challenge. However, if you have ever seen The Dark Crystal, the film, that's exactly what this is because it's the script taken and put into novel form. That is all it is. So you don't actually have to read this to enjoy that movie. However, there is actually a Dark Crystal book. It looks like this. If you read this, this is what Jim Henson's Dark Crystal film is based off of. And I have not read this, but I would like to pick it up at some point in time. This, however, just really nice to have if you are a Jim Henson fan or a Dark Crystal fan or just kind of that genre of stuff fan. It's just nice to have my collection, but I'm probably never going to touch this again. October's challenge was to read a book with green on the cover, and I chose Julia Mae Jones of Vladimir. I had a great time with this. I gave this four stars. For as short as this thing was, this thing packed a punch, and it was not what I expected. Not at all. I mean, there was so much stuff going on in this book. Lists of stuff going on in this book. Just so many themes, so many things that are going on in today's world that I didn't even realize could be touched on in the setup of this book. We follow a unnamed narrator who you do not like majority of the book, but goddamn, if her story's not fucking cool as shit. I had a great time with this one. Great time. November's challenge was to read a book with stars on the cover. And if this was the perfect time to read this. I took part in the SJM read along this past year, hosted by Jen over the Book Refuge. And the installment that worked for November was to read A Court of Frost and Starlight. And there is a star right there. So this was very just serendipity moment to read this. This is the only installment of the Akatar series so far that I've given not given a five star to because I could take or leave this. But this was fun. It was a good time. It was a nice little reminder of my friends. And I got to see Farah and Asriel and Cassian in kind of like a more chilled kind of light. But I just felt bad for Reese. He just wanted to bang his wife the entire book. That's all he fucking wanted to do. But people want to leave him fucking alone. I, I just felt bad for the guy. So, um, but definitely a good time. And it definitely sets up points that are going to be hit in a court of silver flames. Um, I believe in what I've been told, which I will be reading very, very soon. So, yay. And December's challenge was to read a book that your husband chose. Didn't complete that. Didn't. Didn't complete it. He chose um, Demon Slayer by William Henry, the third installment in the first omnibus of the Warhammer, Chron Warhammer Chronicles, Gotrick Gotrick and Felix, and I did not get to it. So, um, yeah. But those are all the books I read for my TBR jar challenge. Now, that is my year, guys. That's what it is. You've seen my stats. You've seen me. You've seen my genre breakdowns. You've seen my star ratings. And now you've seen when I read my TBR jar challenge, which was the challenge that I literally set for myself. Now, if you have stuck with me this far, thank you so much. It's time for my announcement. My announcement is this. Every year at the end of the year, all the booktubers I see do their best of videos, you know, best series, top 10 books, top 22 books of 2022, worst books of 2022. They do their best of series. And I think that's fantastic. But something that I really love and I grew up watching every year was the Oscars. I fucking adored watching the Oscars growing up. It was a big deal in my house. Uh, watching the red carpet and everything and finding out we would take bets on who would win. And when I actually moved out of my parents' house, I started this little tradition where I tried to watch all of the Academy Awards nominated Best Picture films before the Oscars even came out. Did I ever do it successfully? I think I did it twice successfully in one year. And then, you know, life gets in the way. And some movies were just, I'm not watching that. There was just some I was like, I'm not watching it. So I thought it would be really cool to do my best ofs in kind of a homage to something that's always been important to me. So I like to announce the first ever First Lady Awards. 
I will be uploading on January 21st. That is a week from today. It is a Saturday. The winners for my First Lady Awards. And prior to that, next week, you will be getting a series of videos that will be showing you all the nominees in the following categories. Best Book, Best Hero, Best Heroine, Best New to Me Author, Best Villain, Best Male Supporting Character, Best Female Supporting Character, Best World Building, Best Erotic Scene. Gotta throw that one in there. Best Cover, Best Completed Series, Best Standalone, Best Original. This is the first installment of a new series to me. And Best Audiobook. So, keep your eyes peeled for those four upcoming videos. And then on Saturday, I will be releasing the winners of the ever the first ever First Lady Awards. So, that's how you guys will get my best of. Because I had how many five-star books this year? Uh, 28. I don't think you guys want to sit here and listen to me talk about 28 books. So, we're going to break it down this way. I'll see you guys all soon with those nominees. And you guys have a great day. And I'll see you guys all soon. Bye.